أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Now today's topic is fair value measurement first of all objective and scope learning outcome students will be able to understand what is meant by the term fair value able to measure fair value if it is most readily available not readily available learn how to incorporate the impact of fair value change and how to calculate and present it in the financial statement now the user to understand valuation techniques input how valuation is done the understand to understand the effect of fair value on pnl or other comprehensive income fair value has a different meanings depending on the context and use fair value is focused on assumptions of the marketplace and and is not entity specific it is therefore take into account any assumptions about risk now let me explain you few things here that uh, fair value standard itself is a standard is not a stand alone standard because it is going to be used in many other standards and since it is going to be widely used that's why they need that it should be very very clear that how to work out the fair value now the other thing is fair value not the entity specific the entity ki apni jo determination hai wo nahi hai it should be market value aapne market se uski value ko determine karna hai ki market mein uski value kya hai that will be the fair value and not entity specific and for that matter we need to take lot of assumptions because in the market when you go into the market there risk involved so we have to consider all those factors which involve in the market determination of pricing so first of all the definition the whole standard is basically based on this definition and the word we use in this definition the price that would be received to sell an asset if you want to sell an asset what price you are going to receive or paid to transfer not to settle to transfer a liability in orderly transaction so we have the assets and we have the liabilities and then he said clearly orderly transaction orderly transaction means that nobody is forcing you to sell it and nobody is forcing you to buy it no it's simply it's open that if somebody is interested to buy what they are going to pay for it orderly normal transactions in the market the, then we have between market market participants although we can simply say buyer and seller but uh, the standard says market participants the people who are having market who are going into the market and buying and selling the goods and services or maybe the assets and liabilities so those those people and the other one is at the measurement date on that particular date when you want to report it in a in financial statements on that date what market participants ready to pay for it basically it is an exit price you know when we buy some products that is the entry price but when you are selling it so at what price we are selling that is the exact price exact means that we are getting out of it fair value information may be more useful than historic cost information why this standard is there because historically we see the assets value in fact let me give you a simple example you got a car you bought it for let's say 20 lakh rupees you run it for 5 years and still you can get 5 uh, 200 uh, 20000 rupees how it is possible but it is possible because the prices of car are going up and up so that is what historically the car may be nil value in the balance sheet because 5 years 20% depreciation nil but the is still working and it, so that's why we need to report that car at fair value how much we get in the market for it then the other thing is use of fair value financial reporting increasing it is required standard required that let the company should report their assets and liabilities at fair value rather than historical value 
An orderly transaction is one that assumes exposure to the market for a period before the date of measurement to allow for formal market activities, normal market activities, and to ensure that it is not a forced sale. As I said, it's not a forced sale. It is anybody who is interested to buy, say what price they are going to pay. Now, these fair value of what? Assets and liabilities. Assets are financial assets. Assets are non-financial assets. So later on, we will come up to these standards where we are going to make use of these fair value calculations if they are uh, non-current assets or if they are current assets or if they are financial assets, if they are non-financial assets. This is similarly, liabilities we have to consider while calculating it. And do remember again, the assets and liability, no matter whether non-financial or financial, use unit of account method. What is this unit of account method? For example, you got 10 machines, so you calculate for each machine what is going to be its value. Or if you want to put together, so that is possible that you can have a group of machines and then you could and you can uh, uh, calculate the fair value of the total of it. But normally they are numbers. Non-financial assets use highest and best use. That is again a very important word here, highest and best use. You know, you can use it yourself, you can sell it or you can convert it. Yeah, you can make so, so many use of an asset. So you must select best use of it. Here best use means economically possible, legally permissible, and financially feasible. That, that will be the most highest uh, use value. Now, the other thing, principal and most advantageous market, market participants. You know, these three words, principal, most advantageous, and market participant. As I said, market participant is a buyer and seller. But so for the principal market, the main market which deals in that particular assets and liabilities. In case, let's say, if you are talking about uh, cotton, so mainly cotton, textile, they have separate market. If, say, you want to garment market, then we have here in Pakistan, in Lahore even, uh, they said Azam Klad market. So the principal market where mostly people are buying and selling, large amount of assets buying and selling. Most advantages in the sense that you have one, two, three markets, which market which you select? Definitely the market which gives us a best price. So then, okay, re reaching to the one market to other market, there is a transport cost also. So we must consider that transport cost also. But do remember, there is a transaction cost as well. That buying and selling, there is a transaction cost. So we should not consider transaction cost. We should consider only the transportation cost while selecting the best market. Then independent, the participant should be independent. I mean, they are not putting, coming together and then buying something. No, they are independent, knowledgeable. They know that this product is available here, 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 and this price and this price. So he has a knowledge. Then we link to all, we link to enter. Then they are also interested to buy. They, they, it's not that, that they are not interested, but they are interested to buy orderly transaction and motivated to transact that they are interested really to buy it, going into that, uh, that transaction. That. Then the, as I mentioned earlier, entry price and exit price. Exit price is a fair value, so we should come up with the exact price. The difference between entry price and exact price is the profit or loss. Thank you very much.